Today we will continue the talk we, we started last week about myopia management or myopia control. Last week we, was, we discussed about uh, topics from uh, how myopia is, is growing in child, in the worldwide and so on. And, and today we will run on uh, soft contact lenses especially and a little bit in atropine. So we will so optical intervention for myopia control. And the idea that we had in all times, it was that uh, GP lenses could help in myopia control. But after uh, the study of Jeff Wallin that show us that they have some results against soft contact lenses for relate to, um, sorry, relate to the um, refraction. So we can see here the difference after uh, three years in refraction, but we have no changes at all in um, axial length. So axial length is one of the most important uh, changes on the eye that we look at when we, we are looking for myopia control. And after this study, the scientific community say that uh, GP lenses has not effect on axial length and, and and uh, hence it will be not suitable for myopia control. But, but it's better than nothing, of course. In all times we work a lot with GP lenses and they do something. They do something, but not so much. Clinically, yes, but uh, actual length, not. So GP lenses needs to be avoided and we need to run for other designs. Today in GP lenses, there are some multifocal GP lenses that could work. And especially I designed a, a myopic GP, that's the lens on eye, and you could see the movement very smooth because the centration is very important. And we have an area of, of at around the pupil that creates the uh, peripheral defocus in behind the retina. This lens show us in the, our studies that move the peripheral refraction. This is in blue is uh, before, here is um, GP lenses, regular GP lenses, so they do something. And here we can see the lens for uh, a myopic lens that is moving the image shell in front of the retina. So the lens is doing something, okay? It's making some difference here, big difference, huge difference. Here we can see the image, that's the topography in front uh, of the front surface of the lens and you can look at the same pattern we have with ortho case. So the central zone will be for far and annular zone will be for near. And that will move the image shell in front of the retina and that will try to slow down myopian children. Of course, we add a lot of aberrations and it's especially we have a coma and a spheric aberration increase uh, with this lens. The, the beauty of the contact lenses that we are talking today on daily contact lenses. So the lenses that are worn during the day. Last, last journey we, we discussed about ortho K. Ortho K lenses are used during the night. The daily wear lenses has a different system for myopic control. They are uh, additive technique. So they change the shape with the, the, the lens, we change the shape of the optical surface and we change the image shell, whatever we want, because we can add the, the, the shapes we want on the front surface of the lens. And this is the beauty because we can make the same difference here all along. We can see the line represents the change in peripheral refraction for all the, 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 the amount of myopia, the children we, we try to in this, in this study. So what we see here is the difference from the, from the normal, uh, this is the retina in zero, and this is the difference we have. And this difference we have, we have more or less the same in nasal than temporal retina for all the, the refractions. What means this? It means we can 
generate the same plus power ring or the same change in peripheral refraction for any any amount of myopia we correct. This is different than ortho K. Ortho K at the moment, we correct around a relationship one by one. We say that that the change for uh, one diopter myopia, it will change one diopter in periphery, two diopters true, four diopters four. But here we can make an, a, a plus four for a child that is minus one. So we can choose the addition we want on that kind of lenses. This is the beauty. And of course, that increases aberrations. That that is this, the, the the thing we are doing. And the moment we 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 use a bifocal or gradient refractive lens or whatever we are using in front of the eye, especially the child eye, we are increasing aberrations. And the aberrations we increase more is coma-like. But the beauty. This is this is this is creating a a, a bad quality of vision. So we need to be very careful about the amount of addition or amount of plus power we are placing there, about the surface we are making there, because if not, we will degrade the vision of the child. But on the other hand, we know that at the right, at, at much, we increase coma-like or spherical aberration, we have more chance for slowdown myopia. So one thing is, being into the other. I place here now um, a recent, uh, just uh, very close, uh, it appears this, yes, four days ago, this article from uh, Spain. And this is a beautiful classification of all the lenses you have for uh, myopic control and bifocal. So in GP lens, we have the the, the, the lenses that are alternating, alternating designs, concentric designs that are, we are what we are using for myopic control, and there is center near or center distance. Center distance is the lenses we are using at the moment for myopic control. Okay, this is the lens that is the design that, for example, is the um, biofinity. Uh, or the Cooper Vision lens, all lens, at this use for many, many, many studies in myopic controls. So we have a central distance and a nuller zone for, for near. Then we have in multifocal, we have a spherical lenses, so it could be anterior or posterior, that will be in GP lenses, but in, in soft lenses, we will use the front surface as spheric. Then we have a concentric rings, and concentric rings are designs that uh, in some, it, it could be the central part for near, but the central part for far. And these designs are designs that are using at the moment for myopic control. We will see more the results here. This is a, a compendium of all the, all the studies we have until now about uh, not not all of them, but mostly of them, about soft contact lenses for myopic control. And uh, the choose for soft, soft material is because it's easy to fit, easy to adapt, easy to wear for, for, for the children, and it's very easily accepted. In my, in my bias, I prefer GP materials because they, they have less chance of problems with like microbial keratitis, but of course the market are trending to soft materials. Maybe they will try to use a high uh, decay, so high silicon hydrogel. We will see in the future about this, but not, not, we are not reached that point right now. Mostly of the designs are made in hydrogel that they are easy to manufacture. So there is some different results we could have uh, the controlling in axial length that we are looking at is more or less similar in almost every study we are looking at. No, not so much difference. So it's around, minimum is around 30% and maximum is 60% in refraction. And minimum is 29 or 27 in axial length and maximum is 52 in axial length. We need to take, a, the first thing is to take the here is in general, any design that impose 
uh, different focalization and retina. So it, it imposes an uh, area in the retina that is the, the focus in front of the retina. It generates a, a slowdown in a, a reduction in axial growth, a reduction in myopia <laughs> evolution. And the other, the other point we need to take out from that uh, chart is different, the same, the same design could collect different results in efficacy. So for example, the lens that is most studied at the moment, that is that lens that is the design that is my side, John Phillips keep 30%, Alicia with Pomeda 32, and Chamberlain 52. So it's, um, it depends of the study we could have another, uh, one result or another result. Uh, that result we de is depending of the age of the child, the time that they were in the lenses, the number of parents that are myops, and the etnia, and the, 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 many, the amount of myopia at the beginning, many, many, many things that we have, and, the, and absolutely the sample of the child we are using for the study. So um, it's the, the numbers, we need to take it very cautious. It's not a, a number. This number is something that could have, have an idea for us that we can, conform myopia in the most part of the child, but not in all the child. And some child will have better result than others. The good thing is, good news is we could do something and we must do something. I will, I will go in some designs and taking the, the, the ideas from this, these results of that studies. And we have the first we had, it was, it is what a study from Brian Holden and they make a lens with a center for far and the peripheral for near and they get a result that was limited in, in result. Not, not, not so good, but acceptably good. And what is what's one of the problem they have here is the lens they design is almost not, only change the peripheral refraction in a section from this zone into 20 degrees in nasal field, but not in temporal field. So that lens failed uh, in the idea to, to move the image shell in front of the retina. And they have another trouble here. They use for control lens, they use a lens that was uh, a lens that changed already peripheral refraction. Yes, you have in the market different soft lenses that are spherical and they are designed to change spherical aberration for normal people, for all old people. But child has different spherical aberration that, that all that, that people of 30s or 40s. So at the moment this lens that is a spherical and is intended to move a little bit the spherical operation in people between 25 to 4 years old, at the moment that is where in child they move the image shell. They change the peripheral refraction. And most of them they are moving in front of the retina making a good result. So here we can see different contact lenses. For example, we have here in in uh, in the in this line is uh, is without nothing. Then we have a pure vision. Then we have a QV. Then we have biofinity, and finally we have eye optics night and day. So one thing we can see here is in temporal retina we have a, a good change in peripheral refraction for night and day. So if you have nothing else, use that lens. It will move the image shell from in front to back in the retina, in temporal retina, around it. The changes in, uh, at 30 degrees is, it, 20 degrees is the point we are looking at most important. At here we change quarter diopter, maybe half to three quarter diopter, but it's good already, it's, it's something. And there is a study that not, 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 it was a study that was not randomized and, and we, we can have some idea, it's not a perfect study that show us that this kind of lenses could control myopia around 15%. So you, can, you know already which lens they use in the control lens. So in control lens, they use 
that lens is a lens night and day that already makes some slowdown in myopia. So we need to understand that the, the, the test lens should do better result if they compare to other lens that not change peripheral refraction. So this is a, the first thing we need to understand that the lens we use for control should not change peripheral refraction. Like for example, it should be pure vision too. Now we are moving to my side. That is the lens that is moving uh, all the all the marketing worldwide for myopic control because they did a big effort making good studies everywhere. And this lens, they have um, two rings. That's plus power rings. So green is for far, red is for near, and tr they try to use. Uh, they, they try to, to obtain good result in children that has medium or low pupil diameter and children that has bigger pupil diameter. Last day we discussed about what happens with the pupil diameter and we know the child that has bigger size of pupil, uh, they, they increase myopia more with glasses. So it's um, very important that child to use, to have this, this peripheral reflection change. And that's why they add a second ring there. This is, was the first study about John Phillips. And they show in a controlateral study that the child, this is, um, this is for six months wearing one lens, one side, other lens, the other side, and six months changing the, switching the lens from one side to other side. So we can see perfectly that the child that are uh, using single vision lens, they are, increasing very fast at the moment they use the bifocal lens, they slow very quick, the, the progression in myopia. And that was the promising results at the beginning that led that other two studies about Ruiz Zapomeda, Alicia in Spain and Chamberlain, Paul Chamberlain, they did that study. And you can see here that the, the results are really beautiful. And after two years, the study continued for two years at the end uh, and continued to, to, to show us that results are consistent along the time. And then they stopped to wear the lens and see what happens on the round and no around there. So it's really, really, really good job made by Copper Vision there. The thing we, we learn here is uh, the difference between the study of Alicia and Paul Chamberlain is the time they, they wear the lenses per day and per week. And one of the things that, that uh, they do that, that in that study is the child are not wearing the lens at all, minimum 10 hours per day, they are out of the study. And this is very important because when uh, this study made, it was done in Hong Kong, lens, this is a diffractive lens. This is the lens model for, um, for monkeys or animals. They did at the beginning, but then for child, it was minimized the rings. And they had uh, acceptable result, not, not, not so good, but they discover that if they only they do only the study with the child that are wearing the lens a minimum of five hours per day, they get enough good result. And this point we learn, and that's what um, this study make this thing about uh, the hours of wearing. We learn that if the child is not wearing the lens a minimum of ten hours per day is not working. And uh, this plays us to, uh, to a, a point that makes some trouble. The trouble is we are, we are obligated to use the, to wear the lens a lot of time per day. Uh, we need to know, we know at the same time that um, the wearing a, a hydrogen lens with low decay is maybe not a good idea. But in general, and that increases the, the risk of microbial keratitis in some cases. But in general, we know for our experience that hydrogels has less risk than silicon hydrogels in microbial keratitis for a long time. So that's the good news.
So we need to control uh, about the, the following, the follow-ups of our child that everything is okay. And in general, we will have not, not, not more adverse events than other kind of lenses. So a myopic soft will be another design that it was in the in there is the version in soft contact lenses from the, the, the GP1. And we can see the, the, uh, the ring there that mimics an ortho K again. So far distance center annular ring for near. It changes the peripheral refraction as well. So we can do the same change and Moreover, we are doing something uh, that I guess we are doing in all the soft, the, uh, soft designs and we are doing with ortho -K as well. We are changing the lack of accommodation. We are moving the, the position of the image behind the retina to the retina a little bit. We know that when we are reading a near or a point of focus is not exactly in the retina, it's a little bit behind because the, the eye make less, less change in accommodation that is necessary and this is the lack of accommodation. And if this lack is too high, the image is too far away in the retina and it's making some blur. Uh, this blur continuously for near, is could be a trigger for myopia development in the future. So moving the, the, the image in front, moving, reducing the lag is a good news that we know at the moment. We have the results for uh, after uh, two years and the beauty of the, of the stu study we did, it was we compare the, the um, single vision lens the amyopic lens, so it's a gradient refractive lens for myopic control in soft and ortho-K. This is the only study that compares the three. And we can see here the difference between ortho-K and, so and the control myopia lens is not far away. And the, for refraction is similar, not so far. Little bit better for ortho-K, of course. We can see the flat line here, so beautiful. Now we arrive to, we finish the soft lenses and we arrive to the pharmacological treatment. We will, we will spend some minutes there. So in pharmacological treatment in the old time, we had a pyrazepine, but pyrazepine disappeared. It has less results than atropine and they don't overcome the, the trials. Atropine get more, um, more knowledge about the efficacy on this study in 2016, it was Atom 1 and Atom 2, and they compare the, the treatment using the different doses on atropine. Atropine, we know, is a dose-dependent drug. So, so we can, they try for 1%, we try for half percent, 0 0.1 and 0 0.01. And the, the, the so funny thing it was that 0 0.01, it was a concentration that they they thought it, it was useless. It, it will help for nothing. And they use that concentration of 0 0.01 just for control, just to have um, the placebo treatment, it was 0 0.01. And uh, the surprise was that the, the, the 0 0.01, 0 0.01, this is, this is the point, makes something. It has, a, it has less efficacy than 1%, but has no rebound after the treatment. Here in this line, the point they, they stop to, to use the atropine drops and very fast, very rapidly, uh, the child that are using 1%, uh, they start to have a rebound and they get almost the same refraction that the child that were only single glasses and not, not atropine. So at this point, worldwide, people start to use 0 0.01 like a holy grail. But the story don't stop here because one of the problem we have is about axial efficacy. Axial efficacy is um, bigger, as bigger uh, as high as the concentration. And for 0.01% of atropine, 
we have no change in axial length. So in comparison to normal group. group. So we have a good result in refraction, but not in axial length. And this show us that this change in this myopic control in refraction should be done by the lens changes because atropine will block the accommodation and the changes in the lens, it will relax the lens, but no change in axial length. And that's why they start to do other studies that we was finished in 2018, this, this study, and it show us that comparing 0 0.01 to 0 0.05, we have, of, of course, more, my, more bigger pupils, more, more pupil uh, mitriasis, and we have more uh, problem with accommodation, okay? But uh, you know the child has a big accommodation, so uh, range of accommodation, so in theory it's not really a problem. But for efficacy, we have bigger efficacy. We have a 51% of myopia control in axial length. And the thing we don't know at the moment is we will have rebound or not. In theory, we will have not. So today we are many people that start to, to use instead 0 0.01, 0 0.02, or maybe 0 0.05. That is a, a point that today we have not an answer. What we know today is we are starting to do combined treatments. Here we are comparing child that are using single vision glasses plus atropine. But the idea today is to join ortho -K plus atropine. That it seems it works well because the mechanism is a slightly in retina. It is not the same. It's a slightly different mechanism for action. So both both treatments add make an, a, a, an add in the in efficacy. And also for soft contact lenses with uh, peripheral refraction changes, we are using soft contact lenses plus atropine. And these we will know the results in the next two, three, four or five years for sure. But I, I know that we will, it will be uh, a positive association. Uh, one moment, this is frozen again. Second. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Atropine is not extent of risk. And one problem with atropine is this uh, it depends on the dose, and increasing the dose, we have different uh, problems. The, the first problem is the light sensitivity the blur for near because we change the accommodation, it could have some headaches, it could have irritation, it could have allergy. But at the same time, on the other side, we have different risk. And, and the myopia risk is not for now, it's a risk that will arrive in the future. It's like global change. We are not seeing almost today the changes, but we will see that in 20 to 30 to 50 years. That's why we are, it's difficult to understand that it's so important to act today to have the result tomorrow. So we need to balance risk benefit again, as the same we are doing with uh, contact lenses, risk benefit. The risk benefit tell us that we have the risk for microbial keratitis with just using soft contact lenses, and we have the risk for macular degen degeneration in the future. So which one you choose? And this is the, for me, is very clear. So this is a um, compendium of the idea we can do using the atropine treatment. And this is the idea for this, because no one wants to have the child with atropine all the time long. So they, they start with the 0 0.01, and do you check the refraction every six months? I will, I will say add the actual length there. If it's, it's less than half diopter per year, well, indeed, if we have a child with less than half diopter per year, maybe you don't need to, to use atropine there. But if it's progressing more than half diopter per year, then you need to, to change after six months, maybe you need to change a dose of higher quantity, for example, 0 0.05 or 
uh, here in the graph is saying use order treatment. But from my point of view, is you have a child with less than half diopter per year, you could decide what you will do here. I will treat the, the child anyway, but if you decide to wait, you check the refraction every six months and you decide. But if you, you have a child with more progression than half diopter per year, then you could start with orthokeratology of scarf contact lenses, look at after six months and decide. And if it's increasing more than half diopter per year, you could start to use atropine on top of ortho K or soft contact lenses. Then you will control every six months to, to know what is happening. And then here is the, 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 the questions when you will stop to, to use atropine. In theory, you will stop that at the moment that the myopia will not increase anymore, but you don't know that. So one option is to you stop the treatment for six months and, or one year and you see if the progression is still there or not. So it's like a loop. You are looking at what is happening, you stop, you look what is happening, you decide to go into again or not, and so on. So it's a, it's a different uh, options you will have trying to, to avoid to put the drop every night in the eye of the child, to put the minimum the time the eye drop in the eye of the child. That will be the idea of that chart. And, we, and this is arriving to the point that how to monitor the myopia progression. And the clear answer is the axial length. And you only can do that if you are doing, um, you are in a hospital or you have that device. If you have not the device, you will do it use, using the refraction. So you could do uh, a refractor, you could do the refraction uh, this is peripheral refraction. This you can do the refraction with uh, every every six months, ideally with cycloplasia. We will discuss this this image in some minutes. But here we have a, a very useful graph. Uh, this useful graph it tell us where we are. So if you have let's imagine you, you have a child that arrived to your office. The child will have ten years old, and let's say they have. 24 millimeters axial length on the eye. So we move here in the chart and we are exactly this point. At uh, this point, it means that at this age, only 15, 12% of child will be myopic at the moment. Maybe it's not myopic at the moment, but we know that the change to our myop in the future will be around the eight, 60 to 90%. And the to reach high myopia will be in between one to to nine percent. So you it, you are able to tell the parents, okay, your child is there, and the normal myopia, normal it will be here. So you are above the line, and the chance that your child become myopic will be very high. So it's the moment to start to follow this, and the way to follow this is the first thing we will do is advice for changing uh, about the time, the span of doors, maximize the time and span of doors, minimize the time in computers, laptops, screens, reading, and optimize the time of doors. Use the proper light inside, bright light, good distance, and if it's necessary and it's already myop, all the things we have, all the tools we have to stop, stop or slow the myopia from that moment and go on. If you are using ortho -K, this belongs to last day, if you are using ortho -K, the way to control a refraction if you don't have actual length is to over refract with the lens on eye, if it's possible cycloplasia, and you took a topography of the, uh, of the anterior base, anterior uh, surface of the lens, so you have the anterior curve. Then when you change the, we, we have the follow-up, the change in myopia will be the refraction you have at the baseline, re subtract the refraction you have today, less the change in power change in the anterior surface. That is the change that the lens is made because the deformation of the, of the GP lens and needs to be taken into account. That will be something that you will, it will help to you to follow the child uh, evolution. But of course, axial length is the main uh, 
uh, main measure we are taking account in the future. Again, if you don't have axial length measurements, look at the fundoscopy, look at the eye, look at the retina. Retina will tell you if you are reaching uh, bad uh, changes that are not interesting in, in the, that eye and it, you should be more or less aggressive in your treatments. That is told you what to do like a clinician. Peripheral refraction is possible to measure with a retinoscopy. So the child is looking far away to strike the far away and you stay, stay with your retinoscopy with the, with the vertical line in front of the eye. It's the vertical line that you will use here and you move in horizontal. And there is a plus one, one five. So that child is wearing the, the, the soft contact lenses for myopia control and we are measuring if we obtain myopia refraction in the periphery, that's what we want. If we measure in the central, in the, cent, in the, in the, in the central axis of vision, we have neutral refraction or a plus little bit plus, so the, the child is perfectly correct in the straight line. We need to find a 30 degrees in the temporal retina. We need to find myopia. That will tell us we move the image shell in front of the retina and we will have good results in the future for myopia control. Again, I, I repeat, why we need to do this. So we have this case, this is a real case. This is a cycloplegic measurements from the child at uh, eight years old, right to the office, half plus, plus half diopter hyperopia. At eight years, they start, at nine years old, they start with um, myopia, last light day myopia, single vision glasses, all that time, all that time, all that time. And here we equipate with singular, uh, with re re relative refractive gradient lens treatment. So it's a, a myopic lens. And we see the change of the line. We have a some regression here that it means the choroid makes some increase of, um, of thickness. And this is the change. And the idea is what it will happen if we did that from the beginning. So if we start from the real beginning, the, that child, sorry, this the line blue is not good, but we will obtain a three diopters difference at the, at the final outcome. We obtain minus four, but we could have a myop of minus two, minus 2.5, instead of minus, minus six. And we know already that minus more than five diopters myopia, it increases the risk by 10 times to have problems uh, in retina. So it will be very important to help that people, that, that girl. And of course, to, to fi finish with minus two, minus 2.5, is nothing, that, nothing to compare to, find, to finish with minus six, of course. We change the life of that person. And that is our job here to do, change life and prevent disease and, and, and prevent problems in, in health in the future. Again, I say, what's the risk we want to assume? With contact lenses, we have, of course, problems with uh, microbial keratitis, but no, no, do not think we have a change, one in seven, one in two. So one every two miles will have myopic maculopathy if they have more than seven diopters. And this is not for now, this is for the future. But we are today, the day to do the thing. So today is the day to act. Again, I will, I will provide to you this beautiful graph that I love so much that it makes some, uh, um, resume about what we can do. And we can do, of course, ortho -K is my favorite. Then we have multifocal contact lenses on the site of most efficient uh, treatments. Atropine could be used plus ortho -K or multifocal contact lenses and also the time span of doors. So we are using time span of doors, atropine sometimes, plus ortho-K or multifocal contact lenses. And we, if we are not able to do this, we will use progressive addition lenses or bifocal lenses in glasses. 
There is some lens in, uh, that is arriving from Hong Kong that is they call the DMS, DIMS, that is very promising, not yet here. Let's see what happens with this. So it will help a lot to, con to, to, to have a good map of tools uh, that will help us to control myopia because not all the child will be fitted with contact lenses, but most of them can do it very easily. So, you know, today is the day to act and I'm ready. I hope you are ready too. Thank you so much for the attention. I'm ready for the questions. Thank you, John, for this wonderful presentation. This was just amazing. I'm sure the people who are listening is, must be, you know, are very excited and you know, uh, probably the most of the questions has been answered already by you. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. uh, I'll start taking questions now. Uh, the first question is, first question is from um, from Liana Rees. Uh, no, no, that, that is not a question. That was actually a some connection thing. Uh, can you modulate the peripheric zone in pre-amyopic increase power in tighten optical zone? in case of myopia increasing? That's from Jean Philip. Uh, the question, if I understand the question, if, if we can modulate the diameter of the optical zone in front of the, in the increase of myopia in a certain child, that's it? Yeah, that's per peripheric zone. <laughs> yeah, we can do it. The, the point is today we are, <sighs> We are, we are, we have not, we have not today the, the, the knowledge to be sure about the, the, the importance of the diameter of the, of, of the optical zone. Of course, we have some cues that tell us that at the moment we generate um, smaller optical zones and the, the plus power ring is closest to the center of the, of the, of the axis of the pupil, it is it's more higher efficacy. So we can do that with ortho -gay. we can do that with soft contact lenses, we can do that with GP lenses, of course. And we can manage as well the, the amount of plus power we use. But last day someone asked me about the how much plus power and in theory it should be more than four but nobody knows today that answer we have some cues that we could be but yeah maybe yes maybe yes we can do it we can do it but we don't know the efficacy we have okay right uh, our next question is from Pierre uh, Vakudir from France mm -hmm. and uh, the question is in French, I'll just read it out and it says in English is, why does myopia generally stop progressing at around 20, 25 years of age? Myopia, we have, okay, around, there is 10% of the myopes that will still eye grow at 30 years old. So we, we, we are not able to say, if you open up old book, the, the book I studied, you will read the myopia will be stopped around 25 years old. Okay, finish the question. But this is not the true. The true is that myopia will start around nine, around nine years old, but some child will start at three years old, some child will start at six years old, some child will start at 12, some start at 16. And at what age will, will stop? Some in general, around uh, between 17 years old is the age where the, the, the mean population slow down a lot, the progression. So the worst age is between 12 to 17. That's the most, the, 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 the area where the child uh, is increasing more the myopia. But this doesn't mean that after that point, you, you are not able to increase. We, we see some myopes at four years old that are already increasing myopia. So we see these things. So it's not a, a number, but we have a, a certain period. Uh, it, it, it's between 12 to 17 years old. And this is because it, myopia is uh, related 
to the body changes as well, and especially about sexual hormones. So the the the, cha the, the sexual hormones and my axial eye growth change are related. And this means that how is changing this in uh, and the eye grow in the uh, in the change of the eye is related to the change in the body as well in a certain amount. So we know this from the body, and also at the same time we know that today nobody stops to read, nobody stops to look at a screen at any moment. We have in a society that are looking in here for all time long. So myopia, we have not an age to say at that age myopia will be stopped. We have not a cue there. <clears throat> Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, another question is from Payal Sangnani. Uh, she wants to know, what about near correction along with atropine? We need to correct it or not? And what if patient is pseudomyope? A water correction? Yeah, I mean, what about the near correction? I mean, if we give atropine, so what will happen to near correction? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, so that's the yeah, question. Sure. Uh, atropine will reduce the amount of amplitude, will reduce the amplitude of accommodation. If we are using 0.01%, it will reduce the, the accommodation range around maximum one diopter. We are using 0.05, we will have around two diopters. But let's imagine a child of uh, nine years old, it will have around around 10 diopters of uh, amplitude of accommodation. So he has enough range to, to use his accommodation for near. And in general, we don't need to correct that. But if you are using glasses, my strong recommendation is to use bifocals uh, or progressive lenses. And then you are using an ad for near on one, one five, one 5 is a good ad for near in bifocals or uh, PALS, P-A-L. So you are, you are correcting the, 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 the vision for near at that time, not for my, not for uh, contact lenses. Anyway, when you are using soft contact lenses with peripheral addition or ref, um, change, peripheral refraction or gradient refractive lenses, you are using a kind of bifocal or kind of multifocal lenses. So you are making some change in range of accommodation provided by the lens. So we have no trouble with this. We are using atropine and we are not looking uh, so much at this unless the child has a trouble in accommodation and you can do some visual therapy there if the accommodation is very reduced, but we don't look at that point in this. Okay, now uh, another question is from Gene Philip, and he wants to know if uh, atropine drops one in the morning to avoid accommodation in the day, no, no, or no, in no. the evening to avoid side effects. Only one, uh, only one in the evening, just before go sleep. That's it. Any, any, any specific reason for that? Why can't we use it in the morning? That's why um, the first thing is because um, we, we want to avoid travel during the day. If we put a drop in the morning, we have a pupil dilatation. We have a reduction of amplitude accommodation. We have a, a lot of uh, side effects. And the second thing is because all studies that are in, in the, in, at the moment published they did only the, the drop before go to sleep. So we follow what the studies did and this is the most comfortable thing for child. So worldwide is only one drop before go to sleep. That's it, that's all, no more. Okay, now another question is from Pierre France again. And she writes in French that why can myopia be stabilized when the axial length increases? The two are not linked? No, uh, they are they are linked and not. Um, refraction is one thing and axial length is another thing. It is related around seventy percent, not more. Mm -hmm. So um, th that's why we want to look at axial length changes to to monitor our child because. The problem for the myopia is coming from the retina. At the moment we <coughs> have an eye that is growing, we will have a problem with the, the problems in the retina. If we increase the refraction because 
your cornea changes or you have a change in anterior chamber there. It's not, it's, we don't care so much. So refraction is correlated with axial length, but not totally, it's around only 70%. At the moment, we have an, a, a stop in axial length grow. We must have a stop in, in refraction, but they are not correlate. We, we can have uh, changes on lens that will compensate the changes in axial length or changes in corneal uh, power that compensates the changes in axial length. So that's why refraction could could uh, lie about the myopia is really stopped. You could have a good result in, in refraction. No, maybe in refraction is not changing, but you have axial and I grow, uh, still growing because the lens is thinning and is compensating that. So two, one is related to other, but only per 70%. That's why we need to look at axial length growth. Yeah. Right, and another question from Jean Philip is again, uh, is outdoor time spent as efficacy once myopia is there or it is only for prevention? I don't understand exactly the, the question. Now, what he wants to ask is, uh, the outdoors activity is what we advise to all mm. the kids to go out and play. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, it, what kind of efficacy and or it is only for the prevention condition? Okay, that's a good question as well. We have, um, okay, the studies show us that it's good for prevention and it could have a, ch a chance to prevent myopia from around to 10 to 30% in child. So it depends of, of the study we look at. And one thing that the, the scientific community has not uh, good answers, we are not, uh, uh, is about if it's useful for child that are already myops. Uh, this is coming from study that show us in that study that it, it um, stay outdoors was useful for prevent myopia and it was worthless for child that are already myops. But in my bias, I'm really biased to think, to believe that uh, stay outdoors is useful for both, for prevention and for child that are already myops. I will, I, I put my child, my myop child always outdoors as maximum possible with bright light and maximum as possible, everyone. Even if some studies say that is not very, very useful because I'm sure that it will appear in the future once one article that will say that the stay outdoors is helping for myops already. So let's, let's wait for the scientific uh, community in the future. But yes, yes, it is efficacy, yeah. Right, now Matri wants to know, is amyopic lenses available in India? <laughs> 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 maybe, maybe you can answer that. Uh, probably, uh, Madhvi, uh, soon it is going to launch in India. So, uh, you know, just wait for and stay tuned and we'll let you know. <laughs> well, uh, uh, Sachidanand, uh, as Sachidanand wants to know that, you know, we are making defocus with contact lenses. And so we make defocus with glasses too by giving CR39 without ARC, ARC coating lenses. So uh, can we do that with CR lenses? Do you suggest it is working, John? Which kind of CR lenses? Uh, the plastic lenses, CR39 lenses. Oh, okay, 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 for, for glasses, right? Well, yeah, 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 one, yeah. one of the problem with the glasses are we are moving our eyes. And with the contact lenses, we are moving the lens with the eye. That's the way, that's why we are working always with uh, contact lenses instead to your glasses, because there are different designs in glasses trying to mimic, to change the peripheral refraction, but it's generating a lot of problems with the, 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 the users because they, they should look straight ahead in the center. That's why DIMS lenses from Hong Kong are changing the, the panorama because they, they, they use a micro arrays all around the lens. So everywhere you are looking, you have imposed the focus. And this lens makes a lot of, uh, it's very promising, but with the CR uh, materials in, uh, in glasses, we, can, we, we, we are not able to do a good result for myopic control. We are not, it's, we, it's not possible to, do, to work with this. 
right. Now I have a very, very wonderful question from Saurav Kalsi. And he says that, sir, is levodopa plays important role in map control? For people who doesn't know who, who, what is levodopa, just to let you know that this is a pharmaceutical combination which is used for you know treatment in Parkinson disease. Mm, yeah. Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. I have I have no information about this. I really, I'm so sorry, but this is something that I need look to need to look at. I have not an answer for this. I'm I'm really sorry. Yeah. I, I just have one thing uh, in levodopa that you know, levodopa shows a similar potency to that of atropine, currently the primary pharmacological treatment of myopia in humans. Mm -hmm. And that is there. But what is going to be side effect, uh, it is yet to come probably, the studies is yet to come. I, I'm, I need to look at, I'm, I really don't know about levodopa. Really sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Now, uh, a senior optometrist, Yogeshwari Bansal, she wants to know, what is the best contact lenses to control myopia in children? What would be your suggestion? <laughs> the mind. <laughs> My lens. <laughs> right. No, no. So the, the lenses. No, no, the, the DRL. <laughs> of the, oh, yeah. DRL lenses for ortho K is the best one in the world. Uh, but, I know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Okay, we we have not that no we have no an answer for this because the only way to have an answer for this it will do a big study using all the kind of lenses we have in the world in a big sample of child and see which one is the best of them. But we have not this and we will not have this in the future. So we we have um results for different studies, but every study is made in a different way. So it's difficult to know, really difficult to know which one is the best. Uh, mm -hmm. But from my point of view, I, we can know which one is the worst. And, and, I know. and today, no, we have not enough scientific evidence, but I guess reducing the optical zone treatment in ortho -K could could help. And having a lens that in soft lenses that could be very stable on the eye with a good, um, good um, physiological properties will be good. And having the, the proper and well changing the optical zone and the addition for that child will be the best. But today we are still there and we need, we need more time to know. You know we have not, not, not an answer there, yeah. Okay, and what would be your call on bifocal soft contact lenses for children from myopia control? Yeah, we are, okay, we mix the, the names. We, we, when we say bifocal or, it's, okay, when we say bifocal, on uh, soft lenses are lenses that have a very clear are is a definite defin definitely you have an area for far and area for near they are very clear defined that is by focal that is could be a, a design light like biofinity or proclear multifocal center distance design dominant design that's a bifocal lens uh, when we say progressive lenses, are lenses that the area for near or for far are not so clear and more, uh, in general, is the designs that are spherical are not soft designs. Or when we say a gradient refractive lens is a lens that you have not an area for far, not an area for near, uh, you have a gradient in power from the centers to the edge. So there are different designs. Anyway, I, I say sometimes bifocals because it's easy to understand, but it sometimes is not a bifocal lens, of course. We need to be careful what we are saying. In, in general, we can say multifocal or maybe myopic control will be better name for that lenses. Right. Uh, another question is from one of my friend, Vishal. Uh, he wants to know that, you know, what would be the best method to control axial myopia of a 15 year female going to school as per your research uh, of minus six, both eyes. Uh, again, I don't understand the question. I mean, the question is, uh, probably this question goes to, for his daughter when is concerned, 
is a female of 15 years, female going to school, yeah. and she has axial myopia. So what best method you, you'll choose for that to, you know, stop the progression? Yeah, no, well, uh, in, indeed is, uh, is an answer of that question that is the same answer about how to proceed for any myop, right? Let's say if we are 15 years old, is an age that we can, um, we can, okay, first of all, uh, axial myopia. This is, uh, this is coming from all, all classification of myopia. The myopia was classified by axial, so it means that the main reason to become a myop is because the eye is so long. Of course, that is the worst situation because it's creating a problem of the strange, uh, it's making, making, it's, making a pull from the back of zone of, uh, of the eye and the retina, making thinner. But there is other, or the reason of myopia is refractive. So it means that is the lens of the cornea so, power, so, so, so steep or something like this, right? Of course, axial is the worst situation for us. But any kind of myopia, we, we need to have a treatment there. Next, we have the age. When the child is very young, around five years old, we can do not so many things. If we want to go for um, soft lenses or GP lenses or ortho -K lenses, we need the parents to put the lenses on the eye. And not all the child are ready to, to allow uh, to, put the, to put the lens on. So in that case, maybe we are going for glasses or maybe single vision, it will be the easy way. Or by focal will be my bias. When the child is growing, we have other options. And when we arrive to 15 years old, uh, and, and as well as even more, it's a female, she will, be, uh, she will want contact lenses for sure. So it changes the situation. So in that case, for me, it will be ortho-K, my first option. Ortho-K is the, the gold mm -hmm. standard for myopia control. The next step will be, uh, if it's possible, uh, GP lens with myopia control addition. If it's not possible, we are going for soft, any kind of soft um, contact lens designed for myopia control. If it's not possible, we are going for bifocals, okay? If it's not possible, single vision, right? And um, yeah. if the myopia, what, what is important is to know the progression. It's not the same if that uh, is a, you ask the parents and you say, okay, your girl, at what age she start with myopia? And if the parents tell to you, well, she started 10 years ago, it means that she increased 0 0.6 diopters per year. But if they say, no, she started five years ago, so she increases 1.2 diopters per year. So we have in a totally different situation. When you are below half diopter per year, you can deal with the majority or vast majority of treatments. When you are over one diopter, you need to go for the best treatments you can have in myopia control. And in general, you will need to use maybe atropine on top. So if, if it's the second case, I will, uh, and even if the first case, I will follow my patient every six months, control refraction, control axial if it's possible, and see what is happening. And depending what is happening, we are need, need to move for a more aggressive system for myopia control, or we will know that we are already in the place. That is the idea for right. the general schema for myopia control, I will suggest. Perfect. Now, another question is from Monique. What is your experience with ortho K for high myopia combination with atropine? The, um, okay, high myops, uh, they are around 10% of the myops. So we have not so many. Uh, my experience in high myops is they, they progress faster. And one reason for this is uh, again, uh, if the child has. Um, let's see minus eight or minus, no, I don't, let's, let's see minus 10 at 15 years old, it means that it's increasing very fast myopia. 
because a child, if let's imagine a, a both childs, one child start at, both childs start myopia at nine years old, and when they arrive fifteen years old, one child has minus three, and the other child has minus eight the child for minus three is increasing slowly. The child for minus eight is increasing very, is very fast, rapidly. So we need to be very, very aggressive. And the moment we, we use, for example, ortho K and the child because DRL is able and other lenses are, GOB are as well able to do higher myopia, we see that they are still in, increasing myopia, especially after after uh, after after the moment they change uh, poverty, and at this moment I need to put the atropine as well in add of ortho K to control my job in that child, and even using ortho K plus atropine, they still the eye still grow. So this is my experience in high myops. Of course, we have not so much experience. We have not so many and we are looking what is happening. On other hand, the only study with high myopia, and this high myopia was considered between minus four and minus six or minus seven, diopters for pulling show, show us that they slow down myopia with ortho K as well than lower myops. So in theory, we can, we can control myopia similarly, but we need to know if we are in front of fast progressors or not. So as the parents, how myopia is growing before or right to your office. That's one important point. All right. Now, another question goes from Mr. Ajit Limay. Can you share the study of different addiction lenses and its effects on progression? And second is any adverse response of long-term atropine. Um, yeah, there are some adverse response of, uh, of using atropine a long term, but we have not, not enough time of, of using that drug in child, in myopic child to have a long, long term. We have five years, 10 years. No, we have, we have no more. We will know for sure in the future what is happening. There is some people that is saying that it's making a lot of uh, secondary effects. It's not, it's not, um, it's in child's, in, in, we are using that, we don't know exactly in the future, but in general, uh, all the drugs has secondary effects. Yeah. <clears throat> right, and then another question is from Dr. Meena Karat, that is peripheral distortion due to bifocal contact lenses is significant. Again, please. Uh, is peripheral distortion due to bifocal contact lenses is significant? Yeah, 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 uh, it is. Okay, the quality of image in the peripheral retina it usually is very distorted, even in a normal eye. At the moment mm -hmm. we add a plus, a plus power ring there, we are distorting much more the peripheral refraction. The, the image that arriving to the periphery is really distorted. So um, we don't know. We don't know exactly how the retina know, uh, know where the image is and answer that image. We really don't know, but I, of course it's extremely, extremely distorted image in the periphery, extremely distorted. Even, even in the center is already uh, uh, a distortion of the image that impairs vision for, for far. Of, co of course, it, it changes one or two lines of visual acuity. You're wearing that kind of lenses, it drops a little bit. But we know that, we know that. Well, we don't know how the eye and to respond to that, how the eye knows that we are placing this in front or not. Some people say that is the intensity of light but we don't know at all. Okay. <clears throat> now, one of the other friend, Patricia, she wants to know, when the myopia continues to increase despite ortho K high level, is there any difference to use of pre-amyopic or amyopic silicon lenses? Uh, there is a confusing question because uh, myopia could continue to grow 
even with ortho K. In general, we are taking around 50% uh, of control, maybe more. If we are doing a small optical zone, maybe more. Other thing is uh, the daily wear lenses like amyopic GP or amyopic soft contact lenses, we have the orders always around 40% control. So at, at the waiting time to have model results or have other oral studies, at this moment we, we, we conclude that ortho K is more effective <clears throat> than soft or GP lenses. And one of the, maybe the reasons we have this is because if you don't place the lens for to sleep an overnight on ortho K, you will not see next morning. The, so all the child that are wearing ortho K are wearing ortho K every night. And during the day they have the treatment in place. So it's not 10 hours, it's, it's 16 hours, all day long, they had the treatment in place. So that may be one of the reasons for, for, for what ortho K is more effective than soft or GP lenses. One of the problems with soft or GP lenses are they, they could not wear the lenses if they don't want. That's the problem. They could uh, say, today I have gym, I will not put my lenses on. So uh, that's one of the problems we have with uh, lenses that are used during the day. And that could be one of the reasons of, uh, because these lenses are less effective. <clears throat> right. Another question is from uh, Kalin Pop. Mm -hmm. Do you suggest starting with atropine and add all other optical strategies, or is it depending on progression rate? Do you prefer to start with ortho K? Oh yes. Hello, Kalin. <laughs> nice to <laughs> nice to meet you again here. So um, yeah, I guess I um, I run, answer it already. Uh, my first choice is uh, ortho K. That's my first choice, and that and uh, because my first choice is not always uh, available is what I put my scale of reference. First is ortho K, second will be a kind of uh, or GP or soft lenses for daily wear for my upper control. Next will be bifocals and so on. Then the, the in that is, this is depending of the, of the practitioner, for, but in my office, we never use atropine in the first, uh, first choice if ortho K is ready, if the child is not ready for use of ortho K and he will use glasses, yes, I will put atropine on top. But if he's using ortho K, I will start with ortho K, I will follow for at six months, see what is happening in the eye, at one year, what is happening to the eye, and if he's growing, even with ortho K, then I will use atropine on top but it's around 10% of my patients, no more than that. So that is uh, again the answer for more or less the same question. So um, hopefully right. you stay uh, okay in Romania and this year I guess we will have <laughs> not a meeting there. <laughs> the coronavirus, take care, Kalin. All right. And uh, one question, two questions which is quite similar. Number one is from Masi, which says that a 12 year patient having progressive myopic refractive error along with amblyopia. So in this case, myopia management lens is advisable or not. And number two, other question is from Lona, which again says that with minus five and has isotropia, what will be your call? Ortho K for ortho K. Sure, sure. Okay, the first thing you need to do is treat the amblyopia. And the second thing is do the myopic control. But usually we, we, we must do both things simultaneously. One of the problem is if you fit with ortho K or you fit with soft contact lenses for myopia control, you will decrease the quality of vision. Uh, that's why I don't, I did, don't advise to to wear, uh, to, to don't do uh, only a, uh, um, to, to, to do myopia control at the same time that the uh, amblyopia, because you could decrease the quality of vision. The, in that, that position, you treat amblyopia, you will treat that amblyopia for three months or maximum six months, and then you go for myopia control. That will be the idea. 
Uh, and the second question was similar, right? The, the second one, I, isotropia, yeah, yeah, yeah. Isotropia. Usually, yeah, yeah, yeah. One, one thing is when we have amblyopia. And usually when you have amblyopia, the eye with amblyopia in myops is the highest myop eye. So it, maybe you will never get a good vision in that eye. But at the moment you, you reach a certain amount of quality, more than 0 0.6 uh, of visual acuity, you could go for myopia control of that eye and it's answering very well. So there is other situations or only one eye is myop. And in that case, it's shown that if you treat with ortho K the eye that is already myop, you will slow down the, the, the myopia. You will control the progression of the myopia on the eye that is already myop. And the contralateral contra eye, it will at the time get myopia. So if you have a, 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 a um, isometric myopia, you need to look at both eyes. Not only that in the eye that is myop, you need to look at both eyes. And once you start the treatment in the eye that is myop, you need to control the other one in order to treat it as soon as it starts to have myopia as well. Okay, now Jean Philip wants to know that as extended wear in pre-myop, is it perfect to sleep? Could it be more efficient? No. <laughs> no, because uh, when you sleep, you don't, you don't look at the mobile phone, so it's not necessary. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> I think we have covered most of the questions. And yes, I am getting a couple of separate messages. I think one question is still there from Anand. Mm -hmm. What are the ways we convince our about the need of map control um okay <laughs> Let me put again the question <laughs> repeat the question yeah I mean, what what are the ways i mean you suggest that you know we convince the patient about need of map control uh, i i don't understand the question sorry so sorry no, i mean you say what advice? he says is you say advice no, uh, the question is, you know, uh, particularly in India, where, yeah. you know, when we talk about spectacles, you know, for myopia or contact lenses. Now, how to convince the patient oh, that okay. why we are doing ortho care and what is the need? <laughs> how to emphasize that? Well, this is a marketing question. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, you, okay, here you need to look at and the confidence you could you could transmit to the patient. So there is um, several situations. We have the situation when you have the myopia already, situation when you don't have the myopia yet, but you know the child will become myop, and the situation when the myopia is there and is increasing very rapidly. Of course, in the situation when the myopia is increasing very rapidly, you are in the position uh, to tell to the parents that you need to do something. And probably they will, they will come to your office because they know that you, you are doing uh, treatment for, for, for myopia control, maybe. But at the moment the child is not myop already, you have in a weak position, you, they need to trust you. And this is, this is always the same, the same thing. You will have parents that will trust you from the beginning and parents that will not trust you. And if the parents is not trusting you, you can do anything. So uh, right. the only thing you can do, I, I recommend is when parents trust you, you can work. When the myopia is there, it's very easy. And when parents don't trust you, and you, you must uh, become a futurologist. You must say, <laughs> okay, yeah, you, okay, I, I, I know for, okay, for example, if you have two parents myops, the child has six times more chance to become myop than other child. If the child has plano or at age of six years old, they have a chance of 90% to become myop. If you have a, a follow-up that it was hyperopic and now is no longer hyperopic, that is emetropic, you have a big change to become myop. If you have axial length and you know where you are, 
you know that the, you have the chance to become myop. And you will know if the myopia will, will arrive or the myopia will, will, it will increase very fast. So you, you tell the parents, this child has a very high possibility to become myop, or this child has a very high possibility to increase very quick, very fast the myopia. I recommend you to start today, but if you don't want to start today, I recommend to do a follow-up in six months and see what is happening. And in six months, it, it could come and say, you are, you are right, myopia is increasing <clears throat> very fast and we need to proceed. So some parents need time to be convinced. Some parents will never be convinced and some <clears throat> parents will arrive convinced already and will ask you, please do, do to me, to my child, ortho okay, because I read that in internet. So it depends on the situation, of course, and your ability, like explainer. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, to answer this, I'll add something that, you know, it is all about the practice management yeah. that, you know, you explain them the need, why you are suggesting as a clinician and what will happen in the future in case you don't give it and probably try to give them, you know, one or two live examples. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. Perfect. And explain what it will happen about the retina and so yes. on. So they need to understand that is a damage on the eye for the future. Okay, Rajib, Rajib, hello. Mm -hmm, hello. Yeah, hello. Now I see. Yeah, I, sorry. I see. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah. No problem. So I think, John, we have covered all the questions probably. And uh, I thank you, you know, uh, John, for this wonderful webinar uh, from on behalf of Indian Optometric Association team. And thank you all the participants for, you know, joining us this, this great evening, you know, and, and this, this was indeed a wonderful uh, webinar. And to all the, our, you know, other friends, mercy mon ami and gracias. <laughs> and gracias. <laughs> Amigo. De nada. Thank you yeah. so much. <laughs> merci, mon ami, d'être ici ce soir. Yeah. Thank you, thank you everyone for attend the meeting. And I will, I will put that uh, presentation in uh, in YouTube, so it will be yeah. download. Uh, we'll share, yes. Share. I will share for free for everyone. Thank right, you for right. for um, create that that meeting, Rajiv. It's good idea, and thank you to Indian Automatic Association to to hold that meeting. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.